let's go ahead and kind of rank the open college football jobs. We've already got six of them, and it's not even Halloween yet. I will go on and tell you my top six. I would imagine yours will align uh, relatively similarly. <laughs> I'm going to go LSU number one. I'm going to go USC number two, and then Texas Tech over Washington State, and then Georgia Southern and UConn. That's, I, I think that's the easiest way to do it. I guess the biggest question here is, LSU or USC, the better job, and Texas Tech or Washington State, the better job. You, you've already kind of given your thoughts on, on USC being a better job than LSU as far as it's easier to win there. But also, I, I don't know that I've seen that anymore. I don't know that I think that anymore. Okay, okay, let's, let's talk about this then. Tell me, tell me your thoughts. Well, first off, we've got an administration at LSU that is now willing to pay an extreme price. So that, that has a lot to do with it. We're not losing staff. You can hire anybody you want. Price will be no problem. Which um, means resources will be no problem, right? Yes. That, that's something that hasn't always been. Okay. So that's, that's new. All right. So that's, that's not something that I was expecting. And then just the recruit, like while it's so hard to win in the SEC, it, I just don't know how easy it's going to be to convince kids to want to play in the Pac-12 anymore. I tend to agree with that. I and I agree. also wonder this. Has the state of California, has Southern California lost its shine with with football players, with high school kids? What, is, what does it have to offer people anymore? Because it's not the destination that it used to be. I mean, if you go to the downtown area, if you go to Hollywood, if you go to all these old, famous places, I, I don't mean to sound heartless. I know I'm going to, but they are completely covered with homeless people, encampments, to where all of the things were that used to be a fun thing to go do, you can't go do anymore. True, true. Uh, there's there's a lot to, I mean, we could we could dive into this topic all day, really, but there are a lot of people that are moving out of the West Coast due to a lot of the things that are going on politically over the last couple of years, first off. But this has been a trend for quite some time. Uh, on the West Coast, we've talked in the past about the number of high school, like D1 high school football recruits that come out of the, the California area, right, uh, out of the West Coast and how it's kind of started to diminish a little bit, and you've got a lot more D1 prospects that are coming out of the Southeast. And, you know, while there is still a ton of talent out there, there's still a lot that's offered across the country, and this is a global sport. Kids are not scared to go away from home anymore, uh, along with the fact that a lot of those kids from California that are recruits are, are transplants anyway. So, you know, there's there's not that tie to home that there used to be. Everybody's moving everywhere all the time, it feels like. Uh, but at LSU, you got guys in the state that grow up wearing purple and gold that are all D1 prospects. So you, you got depth at LSU that you couldn't get at USC. Uh, however, I do think sure. it is easier to win at USC if we just want to, you know, if we want to look at it as, as who do you play every year, uh, you're still going to have to play somebody in the playoff once you get there. So I don't I don't know which way is easier there, but how about Texas Tech and Washington State? You you still think Tech is is better better job than Washington State? Yes, yes. You're in the state of Texas. The leftovers of recruits should be enough to compete in the Big Twelve and uh, and in the non con games there outside of Washington State. So yeah, I kind of I kind of tend to agree. And then Georgia Southern just recruiting based better than than UConn as of right now. So well, yeah, UConn is so, one of the worst programs in the country. Yes, those are the six that are open. Now let's talk about who's coming open next, and we're going to run through very quickly some of these hot seat positions right now. First off, uh, Justin Fuente at Virginia Tech. I mean, that seat is scalding currently. It is it is on fire. It is smoking. The fact that he is not out yet is a little surprising after losing three straight at home, including that last second touchdown or last minute touchdown to Syracuse. That one and and Manny Diaz at Miami. He he kind of got the monkey off his back a little bit with the win over NC State. I don't know how much that helps considering the the kind of press tour that the AD at Miami went on last week. But those two that you know in the ACC. Yeah, you kind of feel like both are maybe gone at the end of the season, or or is it only Fuente? Well, Fuente's already gone. I think that's done. The difference is some ADs just that's all, and and I respect that and I understand that. Yeah, and so but but no, there's there's zero doubt. I don't 
if Fuente won out, it doesn't matter. I think he's still gone. Manny Diaz, on the other hand, if Manny Diaz wins out, I think Manny Diaz can save his job. Yeah, I think but so. I, I mean, do think he needs to win out. Yeah, I mean, and they, they, everybody remaining on Miami's schedule, aside from Pitt, uh, has a losing record, if I'm not mistaken. So Yeah, uh, no, there's no reason. They, they need to prepare for Pitt. And if they can win out, which they should beat everybody else, and beat Pitt, then I think he does save his job. He buys himself another year. I, I think you're probably right. Yeah, I mean, it's he's only in his third season. Last year, COVID year, they got up to number seven in the country at one point. It was a little bit of a paper tiger. But, you know, they, he's still got a, a chance to do something there. Herm Edwards at Arizona State. They, you know, this would be nothing on the field. I, I kind of get the sense that, you know, I mean, they go eight and four or something along those lines. Like, he's going to be perfectly fine because I think Arizona State is telling the NCAA, screw you, we don't care. We're going to keep our guy. Hey, is that kind of the sense that you're feeling? Yeah, I do. And and I kind of like that. You know that. I just don't. If, if everybody just stops listening to the NCAA, what are they going to do? Not much, apparently, because they have done nothing regarding this. And, and you called this. They, they have done nothing. And I don't expect them to do anything because there's going to be massive changes after the vote. There's a vote coming in November. There's another vote coming in January. I don't know which one is in regards to reorganizing the NCAA, but it's coming, you know, and we, we're going to figure out exactly what new rules will be and all kinds of different stuff. But uh, I don't anticipate Arizona State getting rid of Herm Edwards. Going to the Big Ten, Scott Frost in Nebraska. Now, you know, the the last loss, the, the loss to Michigan definitely hurts. They've got Purdue this weekend, and they are – uh, pretty sizable favorites in in this spot against Purdue, which is shocking to me. But you look at who they've got remaining on uh, on their schedule, and I don't know. I don't know what he has to do at this point, or or is it just have they just shown enough that hey, this is we we got to get somebody new in here. We got to do something different. If you look at Nebraska's schedule, they have uh, let's see, they lost to Michigan, they lost to Minnesota. Now they've got Purdue, Ohio State, Wisconsin, and Iowa. I I don't know that they win any of those. Now they could certainly grab one or two, but this is a team that's sitting at three and five right now. I don't think you're making a bowl game. You'd have to win three out of those uh, four. So I, I don't think they're going to yeah. get there. And and if they don't, what I mean, what else can you do at this point? Well, nothing. Yeah, yeah. I, I do think he gets fired. I think we're done, and I got no idea where they look, but. I, I think you got to make a change. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's Scott Frost will get another job somewhere else because he'll be able to explain this away as, I just I couldn't get players at Nebraska and blah, 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 which I don't know that I necessarily believe that, but but he'll be able to explain it away and he'll get him a G5 job and he'll work his way back up, but, but we'll see. In the SEC, Dan Mullen. I never would have imagined after winning the SEC East last year, finally getting the win over Georgia, that we would be in this position. But this is a t- all the numbers say that they are good, and and Chris, I don't think they're good, and I, I don't know how to fix it. Like I think he can get away with one more year if he fires Grantham. Is that about the only thing he's got left to do? Maybe, maybe. <laughs> I can't figure this out either. I can't figure Florida out at all. That's the most interesting one of all. I I talked to – I hung out this weekend with an Ole Miss guy and a Mississippi State guy, okay? And and us three hung out and watched football all day Saturday, baseball Saturday. And we we put together this bizarro world of lame leaves for – some job that comes available, okay? Whatever it is. Okay. And, and Ole Miss calls Dan Mullen. <laughs> and, and Leach falls off a cliff next year, and Mississippi State calls you free. <laughs> and we get the band back together of the two most hated guys in the SEC, <laughs> but back in the main <laughs> state, bringing, bringing the piss and vitriol and hatred and anger Back to those universities, just with different jobs. My Lord, I, I don't know. I would pay money to get it. I'd pay money to get it, Gary. Yeah, yeah, I would uh, I would love to see it. I would love to see it. But I I mean, obviously, I doubt that that's going to happen. But, it, it, I mean. How fantastic would it be, though? 
Like uh, like Mike Tomlin said, you never say never, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Never say never. Never say never, but never. But uh, yes, I'm I'm with you. I, I think I think Ole Miss would be more likely to call back Hugh Freeze as opposed to as opposed to calling Dan Mullen. But we we shall see. Two other ones that I got on the list: uh, Seth Luttrell at North Texas. It looks like that thing is about done, which is crazy to think about because he was such a hot name when Graham Harrell was his offensive coordinator. Everybody thought Seth Luttrell was the brains behind that. Nope, that appears to be Harrell. And if that job comes open, I would not doubt that Harrell might be the first call that they make uh, at North Texas and go and grab him from USC. Now, was Harrell's stock bumped up so much that he might be up for uh, some lower-level uh, P5 jobs, you know, some jobs that might be bigger than North Texas? Possibly. Uh, I doubt it, though. I think he would go back to North Texas. And, uh, and Chip Lindsey at Troy, what he is doing with a roster that talented is criminal. He has more than enough players to be able to be successful at Troy. Their offense is like number 111 in points per drive right now. I mean, it is it is putrid what they're doing. And he's supposed to be an offensive guy. I mean, he was the offensive coordinator at Auburn. The reason he got the job is because he had so many ties to recruiting in the state. And they have one of the most talented rosters in all of the Sun Belt. And, and he can't find a way to get this thing done. So I, and his, his seat is getting pretty hot. Troy does not like losing. And I, I'm sure that you know that. I mean, going back all the way to Larry Blakeney. You yeah. know, and, and then they had Neil Brown after that. Like, Neil Brown did great things. That thing was set up for whoever came in to be successful. And his coaching decisions have cost them way, way too many ball games. So, Chip Lindsey, he's likely on the way out. I have no idea who Troy would go after. But uh, but that is another one to watch. So, that is that is seven more jobs that we, we could kind of expect to open up. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.